staying with mm. company results, we are now joined uh, by the chief executive of Coronation Fund Managers, uh, that's uh, Anton Pelain, who's going to be walking us through their numbers. Anton, thank you for, the, for making the time to join us. Now, a quick look at the numbers. Uh, something that sticks out for me is that your assets under management have grown uh, by 8%, but we're seeing that there's been a dip in revenue of around 6%. Talk us through uh, why there's that contradiction and how we should be understanding it. Yeah, um, our assets and management increased by 8%. Um, that's off the, uh, the September 2014 um, year end. What we've been saying to the market is that in the past, the levels of performance fees that we've earned have been abnormal. Mm -hmm. um, in the current year, we think the performance fees have normalized. Uh, and they have, as a result, affected the uh, the earnings, result in the drop in the earnings. So our profits for the year at about 860 million rand, that's increased by 10%, uh, de sorry, decreased mm. by 10%. So an, an, an abnormality in terms of the performance fees that have been, uh, that have been realized up to date, uh, we're seeing a change in that cycle. What does the future look like? Are you going to be coming under increased pressure or are we, ex are we expecting that swing to come through again? So we've been cautioning the market for probably the last three or four years that both the that our business is cyclical and mm -hmm. the, revenues, the revenues that we generate is both linked to the alpha that we generate, either the art performance and the and the um, the market returns. Um, from a performance perspective, uh, if you look at our long-term performance, we remain in the first quartile over significant periods of five, ten years and since inception, which in some cases, for in, in, in some of our, uh, our funds cases, is roughly about 20, 21, 22 years, so mm -hmm. since we started the company. Our house view equity portfolio, for example, that's delivered alpha of 3% per annum since inception uh, mm -hmm. more than 21 years ago. So long-term performance very much remains intact. So long-term long performance is intact, but let's talk about uh, the, the growth uh, of uh, Coronation. I mean, speaking to Jan van Niekerk just a bit earlier, he said it's important for a company like Coronation to grow gradually, and it's not about uh, getting too big too fast or growing any bigger than it already is. Talk to us about your reaction to that statement, and also how do you compare amongst uh, other industry players in terms of the pace of growth that we're seeing? Okay. So... We're not asset gatherers and we don't target our share price. Um, we solely, our sole focus is the delivery of alpha to our clients. Mm. So what we've done, what we did in 2012 was that we uh, closed down or soft closed uh, part of our institutional business, so the multi-asset and the equity portfolios or strategies to new clients. Mm. And this was to, in, this is basically to ensure that we continue to protect that alpha generation. Those products or uh, the retail part of the business does still remain open yeah. and we do still continue to attract um, funds on our fixed income side and institutional side. Mm. But you know, from a uh, from a control point of view, a size point of view, we do monitor that, and we do um, as yeah. we did in 2012, and I think uh, early on in 2003 or 4, we also close funds when our alpha, when mm. when, it, when we thought it was starting to affect our alpha. Anton, you've also spoken about your retail side of the business. Let's bring it into the equation now. Uh, taking a look at your statement, they, you make mention there that there will be a review of uh, the retail offer and maybe even a review of the fee of the fees structure uh, around uh, the, the retail funds. What's the thinking uh, around the retail funds right now? So from uh, every few years, so the last time we did this was 2009, 2009, 2010, we review the retail products and that's just taking into account market conditions, clients, etc. Um, and we are in the process of reviewing our retail products um, as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, this will hopefully result or will result in a, both a simplification and a reduction of fees in certain of the retail products. Mm. So there will certainly a reduction in fees in some elements and also a simplification. Correct. Let's go back to the overriding uh, push and pull between the developed and the emerging markets. And it seems, uh, taking a look at your numbers again, that developed markets have or continue again to outperform emerging markets. Uh, what does the future look like? Do you expect uh, this gap to, to go to continue uh, into the future, especially if we take into consideration global monetary policy trends coming to the fore? Yeah, it's very difficult to predict the future, as you know. So, um, but what we do think is that uh, a lot of what will happen in terms of the impact on both asset flows and asset yeah. valuations uh, will occur once the the, U, the the Fed starts to increase its rates. I mean, you have seen that developed markets have outperformed the um, equity markets. Mm. 
over the over the last few few months, uh, mainly as a result of a depreciation of uh, developing market or emerging market currencies. Mm. And uh, just as a, as a final question, as uh, we wrap up uh, on, 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 on the interview, just give us a sense of uh, the kind of targets that uh, you and your team are looking at as you head into another set of results. Uh, what are you working towards? So the only thing we target in the business, as I say, we don't target, uh, we're not asset gatherers, so we don't target a certain level of assets under management, we don't target our share price. The only target that we have is a generation of alpha or the outperformance um, of the market in terms of our, our, our mandate. A very big thank you to Anton Pele, reluctant uh, to give me uh, insights into the future. He's not <laughs> touching uh, that crystal ball. He is the chief executive of Coronation Fund Managers.